427 is one of Ford's most successful and iconic engines. It's part of Ford's FE family of engines, but unlike the rest, the 427 was engineered specifically for racing. There are two versions of the 427 FE. The top oiler came first. This version sent oil to the camshaft first before eventually making its way to the crank journals. This proved not to be the best design for extended high RPM operation like NASCAR races. So the side oiler was developed, which prioritized oiling to the crankshaft first. But that doesn't mean the 427 top oiler is a bad design. For street applications, the top oiler is actually an excellent engine. Recently, we spent some time at KT Engine Development as they restored and upgraded a top oiler 427 that will be going into a classic 64 Ford Galaxy. The owner, like most of us, wanted a bit more power but he also wasn't willing to sacrifice the bone stock look that went with the rest of the car. So KT Engines set about stuffing an absolutely ridiculous amount of inches into the block without changing anything on the outside of the engine. What they wound up with is a 427 with an astounding 498 cubic inches of displacement that's capable of gobs of torque and very respectable horsepower without a single exterior clue that this is anything but a tame stock rebuild. In other words, a take your money sleeper. One of the defining features of the 427 is the deep skirted block which helps provide extra rigidity. Also, you can identify this as a top oiler because of the smooth sides between the screw in freeze plugs and the oil pan rail. The side oiler has a bulge in the driver's side to accommodate the oil gallery, which provides pressurized oil directly to the crank journals. The foundation for this build is a modern Ford stroker crank, this one from PEP, that bumps up the stroke over a full half inch from the stock 3.784 inches to 4.375. With all that extra stroke, something had to be done to keep the compression manageable. So JE Pistons was tasked to come up with these forged slugs with enough dish to keep the compression in the 10.5 to 1 range so that the engine will live happily on pump gas. Eagle provided the 6.800 long forged rods to connect the crank to the pistons. They use a big block sized big end, which is 2.200 inches, to make it easier to find quality bearings. These, by the way, are Clevite rod bearings being fitted up. The FE and Cleveland engine family share the same main bearing housing bore diameter. So KT Engines uses a Clevite H bearing, which is Clevite's designation for a performance bearing for the mains because they have a 180 degree oil groove. The bottom half of the bearing has no groove and is smooth. That's important because it creates better protective oil wedge than FE main bearings with its full round oil groove. Unfortunately, the bearing width is different so KT engines had to stick with the FE bearings for the thrust. This means purchasing two sets of bearings, but in the long run, KT engines owner Ken Troutman feels it's worth it. The top oiler has no provision to provide oil to the lifters, so you have to run a solid cam and lifter combination. The cam chosen for this build is a comp cams grind with 244 degrees of duration on the intakes and 252 on the exhaust. That's at 50 thousandths lift. The purpose of the deep skirt is to allow for cross bolted main caps for extra strength and rigidity. Ford's engineers decided to use machine spacers that slot between the sides of the caps and the block. They can be a tight fit, so you may have to resort to a little persuasion. Also, each spacer is machined for its specific location, so don't mix them up. Generally, the accepted practice is to install the main caps, torque the main cap bolts, and then install the spacers and torque the side bolts. The main bolts are torqued to 100 foot-pounds, and the smaller side bolts go into 35, both with motor oil lubricating the threads. After fitting up the pistons on the rods and carefully slotting each ring into place, KT Engine's Mike Blackwell 
gently drops each piston and rod assembly into its appropriate cylinder in the block. We didn't catch it on video, but Blackwell has already checked rod bolt stretch. So each of the rod bolts are torqued to 65 foot pounds. Rod side clearance is also checked and they spec'd out well with an average of 21 thousandths on each journal. Oil pressure is handled by a Melling high volume oil pump. There will also be a Canton pickup tube attached to the pump, which makes for the high volume Canton oil pan. The Canton pan should provide much improved oil control versus the lower volume stock stamped steel oil pan. As we mentioned earlier, the 427 top oiler has no provision to provide hydraulic lifters with oil, so you've got to go solid. The stock setup uses flat tappets, but here Blackwell drops in a set of comp cams and Durex solid rollers. The Endurex is a quality, lightweight lifter built for performance. But interestingly, they were also chosen because the Endurexes are tall enough to clear the link bars over the lifter bores in the block, so modifications aren't required to the cast iron block. Since the engine has to stay absolutely stock on the exterior, the original cast iron heads are cleaned up and then bolted back on. In fact, the owner wanted to be able to return the engine back to purely stock trim inside and out later on if he wanted, so the head hasn't even been ported. Up top are a set of comp cams valve springs weighing in at 200 pounds of pressure on the seat and 480 fully open. The 427 doesn't provide oil conventionally to the valve train through the lifters and push rods. Instead, here you can see the port that opens up to the top of the cylinder head right beside one of the bolt holes for fastening the rocker stand in place. Oil exits this port, travels up the rocker stand around the bolt, and feeds the rocker arms through the rocker shaft running the length of the head. With 1.73 to 1 ratio rockers, the intake valve lift is 580 thousandths while the exhausts are 599 thousandths. Another unique feature of Ford's FE engine family is the intake manifold actually forms part of the base for the valve train. By the way, this is an original Ford dual quad aluminum intake for this engine. Once the Harlan Sharp rocker system is bolted up, the rockers are lashed to 18 thousandths for the intakes and 20 thousandths for the exhausts. All the linkages and the fuel feed system for the dual quad carbs you see here are all original equipment. the dyno, the 498 cubic inch 427 made tons of torque all day long and was happy doing it. Considering that this engine still uses the original cylinder heads, intake, carburetors and more, punching out over 470 horsepower and righteous amounts of torque on pump gas no less, you've got to admit it's pretty impressive. And once it's back home in the car, there will be no visual clue that this FE has been punched out to nearly 500 cubic inches. <laughs>